You've probably been told Ham Radio's Amateur Extra Exam is so difficult, you shouldn't even try it. I'm Jim, N4BFR from Ham Radio Prep, and I'm here to tell you those naysayers just haven't studied the right way. When I studied for the Amateur Extra Exam 10 years ago, I went through a thick book that made my head spin from all the detailed material. And then I took practice test after practice test that wasn't related at all to what I studied. The ham radio prep method is much easier. It's 10 lessons broken down into a video segment, followed by a written segment, and a practice test just on that lesson. The written lesson goes through the same wording as the video, with the same graphs and charts, and it doesn't stray off into concepts and more engineering than you're going to need. It tells you about the context of the question and why it's important in your ham radio experience. Let's go through four areas of the amateur extra exam that get a bad rap as being too difficult. Let's start with Smith charts. For some reason, Smith charts are a boogeyman of the amateur extra exam. Of the 50 questions on the test, you will have one question on Smith charts. Since you can get 13 wrong and still pass on the extra exam, you could totally blow off this area and still become an extra. But it's not that difficult. Here's one of the questions straight out of lesson nine. On the Smith chart shown in figure E9-3, what is the only straight line shown? A, the reactance axis, B, the current axis, C, the voltage axis, or D, the resistance axis? In the lesson, it looks like this. See how easy we make that? The blue answers in the text tie directly back to the answers on the exam. Now let's solve some logic problems. Part of the FCC's mission of the amateur radio service is to build a group of trained operators, technicians, and electronics experts. It's that electronics experts element that comes into play in lesson seven on practical circuits. Digital circuits use logic gates to perform functions. One of those is an OR gate. Let's look at the exam question. What logical operation does an OR gate perform? A, it produces logic one at its output if any or all inputs are logic one. B, it produces logic zero at its output if all inputs are logic one. C, it only produces logic zero at its output when all inputs are logic one. D, it produces logic one at its output if all inputs are logic zero. Now let's see it in the lesson. See how all of these come together in context? That's part of the benefit of the ham radio prep study method. It's much easier than trying to memorize over 620 questions and answers. All of these choices are correct, could be a trap. In the amateur extra question pool, about 7% of all the questions provide an answer option of all these choices are correct, but more often than not, that is the wrong answer. Let's take a look at a sample where it is the right answer from lesson one. Which of the following conditions apply when transmitting spread spectrum emissions? A station transmitting SS emission must not cause harmful interference to other stations employing other authorized emissions. The transmitting station must be in an area regulated by the FCC or in a country that permits SS emissions. The transmission must not be used to obscure the meaning of any communication. All these choices are correct. We treat these uniquely in the course, not just saying answer all are correct, but giving the context that helps you remember. Here's that question in the lesson. See how that context helps you understand when these questions are true? Let's talk about studying radio wave propagation. As an amateur extra ham, it's expected that you're becoming a more advanced ham radio operator, so more details are provided to help you operate effectively. Getting your signal where you want it to go can be a challenge with changing atmospheric conditions. In addition to the discussion of how different layers of the atmosphere impact how the signal reflects, the lesson gives you a tool called ray tracing to call on. Here's how it looks in the lesson. And here's how it shows up on the exam. What does the radio communication term ray tracing describe? A, the process in which an electronic display presents a pattern. B, modeling a radio wave's path through the ionosphere. C, determining the radiation pattern from an array of antennas. Or D, 
evaluating high voltage sources for x-rays. Learning the questions and the context is an important part of the ham radio prep lesson style. So looking at some of the questions in context and how you get through them in the ham radio prep lessons shows it's not insurmountable to get your amateur extra license. Yes, it's gonna require more study than you probably put into the tech or general exams, but the reward is you get to be in that exclusive group of the top 20% of all amateur radio operators in the US with short call signs, special band privileges, easier international reciprocal licensing, and more. If you're ready to conquer the Amateur Extra Class Challenge, it's time to get started. Visit hamradioprep.com and sign up today. Our Extra Class course includes our 100% money back guarantee you pass the first time you take the exam. So let's get to it. Good luck, and we hope to hear you on the Amateur Extra Band soon.